We are currently in the lab, as you can see, suited and booted, ready to do something very exciting. Hang on, they're not boots. No, well, suited and shooed, as it were. We're going to be doing a pretty good experiment today uh, involving the ignition of ice. We've got our trusty chemical, so in this case it's calcium carbide, so it's CaC2. And we're going to put this into a metal tray. So no glassware this time. Sam was doing a reaction of calcium carbide. It's one of these compounds that used to be really very common but now you only find in labs. And the reason it used to be common was that it was used for lights, for cars, and also for bicycles. Because in the old days, beginning of the 20th century, end of the 19th, batteries were very primitive compared to the batteries that we have now in mobile phones and things. And so it was very difficult to make a compact electric light. So instead, people used lamps in which there was calcium carbide as a solid underneath and water dripped slowly on it and generated acetylene gas, which then burnt in a small burner. Now the next stage is actually involving lumps of ice. We're going to put the lumps of ice on top of the calcium carbide and they're going to react. So I need to be a bit quick with this. OK, we've got the match on the stick, and we'll see what happens. OK, so what we have here is the reaction of calcium carbide with the water in the form of ice, and we're getting acetylene gas produced. And setting off the uh, alarm as well. So the acetylene gas, um, C2H2, or ethine, as, as it's um, known properly, is the product of this chemical reaction and all we've done is just ignite it but it does look as if we've set fire to blocks of ice. And acetylene when it burns because it is a very carbon rich compound it's C2H2 generates a lot of heat and a very bright flame. So it's not as bright as a modern xenon headlight but in the old days when people were used to using oil lamps it was pretty bright. And of course, cars didn't drive quite as fast as they do nowadays, and there was less traffic. So on really old cars, you see these very beautiful carbide lamps. And people also sometimes used them for caving when they went underground. But then, of course, there was a danger that the flame from the carbide lamp could ignite methane and blow themselves up. But they used them in potholes where you don't normally get methane. So if you find an old adventure story about young children, you may suddenly read that they use carbide lamps on their bicycles. It's a, it's a really, yeah, it's a, it's a cool, hot reaction. It's, it's great fun to do. And I think if it was the chemical stig that was doing this, he'd go bigger than this particular tray, but this is what we've got. Neil, I believe, I've been told, um, is actually off ill. And I didn't think Neil could possibly be ill because Neil is, is our chemical stig. He is indestructible. More likely he's up on covert ops. Oh, covert ops, I think so, yeah, covert ops, definitely. Uh, I only found out about this one a few, uh, well, a few months ago, and I've been waiting and saving up at the right time, right moment to actually do this reaction. So it's not one I've done out in schools or anywhere like that. Um, I think I could do it um, out and about, but it, it would take a very understanding venue and school to let me do this sort of experiment, I think. Well, I think the way they worked them was that you generated a small pressure of acetylene which then escaped through a pinhole to give you a fairly steady flame. And acetylene burns with a very hot flame and nowadays for cutting through steel bars and things like that people still use oxyacetylene cutters where you have a cylinder of acetylene and gas and oxygen, you mix them together and you get very hot flames so you can burn through metal. In fact, it's quite dangerous to compress acetylene because it can explode at high pressure. So normally what happens is that acetylene cylinders are rather large and inside they have some material like porous pot or brick which is covered with acetone, propanone, and this 
then acts as a solvent and under pressure the acetylene will dissolve into the liquid and when you release the pressure it comes out. So you can store quite a large amount of acetylene without going to high pressure as you would with an ordinary gas like nitrogen or CO2. We don't need to do another take, do we? It seems really dangerous to me to have this chemical reaction blazing away on the front of your car. Well, they were, there's only a small quantity and probably if you crashed the car, the flame would go out anyway. And old cars were very heavy, so the major danger was the kinetic energy of this banging into something. And the fact that there was a small flame probably didn't matter all that much. And obviously it's more dangerous than having electrical um, fire, but you can, if you crash a car, have a short circuit of your battery and that can cause a fire as well. So the take-home message was then and now you should drive carefully and not have a crash.